prepare data for exploration. This is course number three of eight in the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. I'm gonna review it right now. You just gotta analyze stuff. All right, guys, I'm on a roll here. I just wrapped up course number three, which is prepare data for exploration of the eight in the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. I'm gonna do a quick recap here for you. This was another five week course and uh, I gave it five stars. I'm gonna start out right up, out the gates and just let you know that I thought that this was a very good course. Uh, I had a good time going through it. I thought that it covered a lot of really important points. So let's just go ahead and jump right in here. So let's uh, let's bring it up on screen. So you can see here, I've uh, I've completed it. I'm not doing the little recap uh, this week. There's over 100,000 people signed up on this course. I figure y'all don't need me to tell you every single time how many people are in the course. It's gonna be moot every time that somebody watches these videos. So just trust that this thing continues to be on a tear. It's super popular and I'm gonna shut up now. So week number one, data types and data structures. I'm gonna jump in here and show you just how slow my computer is. But, so it's gonna give you another, every time it's gonna give you a welcome, gonna review the syllabus, it's gonna talk about where you are, give you a little bit of a refresher on the roadmap. You can see here, uh, it's gonna talk about where you stand, go through those motions, and then there's gonna be a reading talking about whether you should take the, the fast track course of this whole thing and then it gets into the actual content. So first section here is generating data, data collection in our world. Uh, again, this one had a lot of videos, a lot of video content, then with the reading recap, very similar themes. I felt like they weren't pressuring nearly as much to get involved in the forums and, and asking you prompts to get posting. I think maybe they front loaded some of that in the first couple courses, thinking like they wanna get people rolling and involved in the communities. Um, I may be wrong, it may just be just my own perception, my own optics, but I didn't feel like there was as much pressure to get involved in the forums, but I still think that it's a great thing that those are there for people to communicate with one another. So um, I like when I'm reviewing these to show you some of the readings because it, it kind of summarizes, as I've said, the videos. So what this does is it talks about uh, considerations and data selection, how how the data is going to be collected, talking about your data sources, is it, is it first party, third party, all that kind of fun stuff. You know, where are, is the data coming from? How much do you need? What's the right type? The time frame, all sorts of uh, nice schemas and things that they talk about, and then they let you test it. Differ, differentiate between uh, data structures. I thought this was good. It talked about uh, primary and secondary data formats, um, internal versus external, continuous versus discrete, qual versus qual, uh, nominal versus ordinal. A lot of stuff that, again, I might not know in a formal sense, even as somebody who's been in the field for a long time, uh, but seeing it here, it, it makes sense. It's nice to have uh, names to put with the faces of the information that I see out in the wild. Um, structured versus unstructured. All this is really good stuff to keep in mind just as you're dealing with data. It helps when you encounter it that you are familiar. It's even if it's it's just this new raw data set that you encounter, you're like, oh, yeah, this is this is a secondary data set. It is quant data. Um, and you know, I feel this way about it because I know those certain things, right? So it's all about the, the degree to which you can uh, start to mentally bucket, classify, do all of these things uh, with the data just through sheer recognition of sources and ultimately uses, the better off you're gonna be. So I thought this was a good section. Um, there was actually quite a bit of reading here. Uh, structured data, unstructured data gives lots of information about you know, ways to identify them and what makes them different. And then we get into data modeling techniques and uh, how how you might encounter data modeling depending on the types of data that you're, you're working with. So all really good stuff uh, and helpful to see. The videos were also very good, uh, talking through, giving working examples and things like that. So I felt that was good. Exploring data types, fields, and values. Um, what do I want to say about any of this? It, it we talk about data transformation, and they have a very uh, they. When I think of data transformation, I think it's it's slightly different than this. I have more of a hard philosophy of literally transforming data, but they get into things like very technical um, situations where you know even just saving a file into a different format, so like a CSV, comma separated values from an Excel 
technically what you're doing is you're changing the format of that data. I get it conceptually, but it's not something that I've necessarily thought about as full on data transformation. And so they get into more details about different ways that um, data transformation is, is important, what it's used for, how it can be used, uh, and ultimately feeding you into the, the intent of this section. So that was week number one. That was a lot for the first week, right? It was, it was very action packed, lots of good information. And we're gonna jump into week number two. So um, this is uh, preparing data for, see, I need to see some, this is my own, I'm gonna go on sidetrack real quick. Uh, I feel like, how do I go back to my courses? Bear with me while I do this. Preparing data for exploration. No, that's where I'm at, yeah. I feel like they have the names different down here. Yeah, the names are different. So week number two, understanding bias, credibility, privacy, ethics, and access. But once you get into the actual uh, content, it starts to change the name because you're you're at a different point in the the branching. So I just wanted to make sure that I gave the correct name of the week two topics. So um, introducing bias, credibility, privacy, ethics. This was obvious. I'm going to call it important. It was all very important uh, topics, and I, I'll say that I struggled a little bit with some of the the test concepts here because again, I'm doing this completely backwards. I'm going in taking the tests first and then I'm circling back and reviewing the content. And so far, uh, I would say uh, more than 75% of the time I passed the test on the first try, uh, but there's been a couple where I just barely didn't quite pass. And then I had to circle back and read the information from the course because it's like very uh, specific definitions or things that I didn't necessarily know. So again, it's helpful from a standardization standpoint but uh, it, it talking about um, certain privacy, uh, credibility, the way that they're talking about bias, bad data, you know, um, so in order to understand bad data, you have to know what good data is, right? And it, it gets into different um, ways to qualify that. It introduces BigQuery. So we're, we're kind of getting, setting the stage for making sure that you understand how a database functions, different data sets, and getting you prepared for uh, using BigQuery, which is gonna be part of this certificate program. Uh, it gets into data anonymization, which I thought was super important because a lot of people are dealing with PII, personally identifying information. Um, certainly within companies, if you're dealing with all sorts of stuff, there's so many rules, and it's only gonna continue to, to become a thing, but, uh, understanding data, what makes certain data super sensitive, where data has certain laws actually protecting it and how it can be used, how it should be used, how it should be stored, how it, and on and on and on, right? Um, there's, there's a lot there and I think they've done a good job of setting the stage and making sure that we understand the importance of protecting data and what you need to consider when you're working with different types of data. So. Um, and explaining open data. So this is talking about open source data uh, that is available, um, different types of uh, like government data, things like that. Lots of, lots of interesting things to think about here. And uh, it, it was fine uh, week number two. I don't have any strong uh, thoughts otherwise about it but that I did think that it was it was a good section. So and now all about databases. So I said that they were kind of queuing up for database stuff going into BigQuery, but now we are here and I'm gonna jump straight to learning about databases. So here they just get more in depth, more into the details, actually talking about uh, how relational databases work, what different types of data structures and schemas there are. This I thought was super interesting because this is all, again, stuff that I, I hear, I've been exposed to, I've talked, you know, had passionate discussions about Snowflake and star schemas for data, but uh, actually understanding, you know, the, the processing implications and the, the design of uh, data infrastructure as it relates to these things or as these things relate to that. Uh, it 
it kind of forced it out of me. It forced me to really confront these things and make sure that I understood them appropriately. So I appreciated this uh, coming at this point in the course. Uh, it gets into data management, metadata, which is, you know, meta is becoming a, a trendy thing to talk about. That's so meta, right? <laughs> so um, uh, basically wrapping your head around metadata, it, it was a good time to introduce that and making sure that, you know, you're you understand data about the data and what the data about the data is telling you, right? It's 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 like inception for an analyst, right? You you use data to analyze things, but you can also analyze the data. Uh, or it, it, I think I'm saying that right, but that's the whole thing of metadata is you can you can catch QA issues, you can catch uh, data quality, you can catch all sorts of things by understanding the data, like. All of the, all of the different metadata about data. So now I'm rambling, uh, but it was it was a fun section. It actually really got me got the wheels turning, got me thinking about a lot of stuff in in different ways. Uh, then it gets into sorting and filtering. Uh, it it kind of it got into some super basic stuff, but you know introduction again to to BigQuery, talking about uh, SQL best practices, uh, gives you a, a practice guide. Case sensitivity starts talking about different types, you know, select clauses, and um, it even gets into like case when and things like that. So I like where it's going with all of this stuff. Um, you can see here lots of lots of fun things to to start thinking about. That was week number three, and we're going to get into week number four. Organize and optimize, organize and protect your data. So this is it talks about. Uh, organization of your data is talk this gets into things like things that are near and dear to my heart like version control and naming conventions and standardization about how you do certain things because man you could put together all sorts of really cool fancy uh, analytics projects but if you can't locate them or you have no uh, no structured way of storing data or how to let other people get access to what you've done uh, then it's it's just going to make your life miserable if you don't institute these best practices up front so especially if you're like a lone analyst in a company and there's no no structure in place you could be inclined to just have this one folder where you dump all your stuff and that includes like raw data file completed files incompleted files multiple versions of things Everybody deals with this stuff. Nobody is perfect, but definitely getting this out there uh, this early in the certificate program, I think, was important. This made me feel all warm and fuzzy because, again, it's it's planting those seeds of standardization where people start to take more seriously the idea that, oh, yeah, it is valuable to name things appropriately so that you can locate them. Uh, I like to talk about... Uh, it, it was too mean, but there used to be the bus test. You know, if somebody on your team got hit by a bus, what would happen? So I changed it to the lottery test. If somebody on your team wins the lottery and you never see them again, how do you make sure that the stuff that they were working on can be located and used and understood, right? So there's a lot of there's a lot more to it than simply just naming conventions and file storage, but that's a good place to start at least. So as at a minimum, you have access to their files and you understand. Uh, how they how they store things, how they save things, and and all that. So, all important stuff. Super super happy that they did this. And they were talking about the the fight between data security and access to data. Gets into encryption, tokenization, more more on anonymization of data, all that kind of fun stuff. And then lastly, because I think we're now in that was that was week four, right? Yep. Now we're into week five. This was optional. Again, they keep doing this optional stuff. Um, and it appears that I treated it <laughs> as optional. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go based on what I'm seeing here. I do feel like, you know what, I did go through this stuff, but I I wasn't clicking off the completion. But uh, it's, this talks about getting started with LinkedIn. And uh, it, it's trying to sets your your building an online presence building a brand making sure that you're part of the data community things like that that i thought was super important so why is an online presence important they go into the details about that they give you 
a, a kickstart guide for using LinkedIn. And I think this is this is very helpful because a lot of people just jump into LinkedIn because they're told they're supposed to and uh, they don't really know what to do with it or they're intimidated or whatever. But this gives you a really quick and dirty um, basics on what you should do and how to start building your connections and how to you know not be a complete turd when you're messaging people. Uh, it's funny, but it's kind of necessary. If you're on LinkedIn, you know why this is here because you're gonna get lots of really funky messages and uh, the extent to which this helps stymie some of that ridiculousness and actually get people um, you know, promoting themselves appropriately, making connections the right way, I'm all for it. So uh, this is where they do throw in some discussion prompts, wanting you to get involved in the community. So it's, they're not just promoting like LinkedIn, acknowledging the importance of that, but they're also talking about, hey, we've got a community here for you specifically as you're working through this course stuff, so why don't you take a look at that? Um, uh, networking know-how, developing a network, it just goes into more details about you know things that you can do, like sign up for hackathons and webinars and meetups and go to conferences, join associations, uh, help nonprofit organizations, you know? Lots of really good ideas here for ways to get involved, and this is these are really common questions that I get other people in, in the data community get is, is all these budding analysts who are anxious, they're excited, they want to get involved. And they're all asking the same question, like, how do I do this? Or how do I get involved? Or how do I get that first break? This right here is going to give you a lot of good ideas for how to do that and how to start building that network. Uh, and then it you know talks about the benefits of mentorship. And uh, mentorship is incredibly important. I've been fortuitous that throughout my career, I've always had um, a number of mentors at different places I've worked and even at places that I didn't work that I've met through uh, a number of different connections and other things. So the power of mentorship is real. It's it's a, it's a real deal. And this particular course I thought was also the real deal. So I gave it five stars. I started off with that and I'm going to kind of end with that. But again, this certificate program continues to impress me. I think the quality is high. The, the content is good. It's great uh, setting setting a great foundation. I am very much looking forward to getting into the next couple courses where uh, we're going to hopefully start getting a little bit more technical and uh, more to come from there. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching.